Hey everybody, join here. <laughs> I don't have anything to teach you today or show you really, but I thought I'd come by and say hi. YouTube's complaining that I'm not making very many videos and I'm getting way behind. <laughs> Would you all please give me some thumbs up, thumbs down? Both are good. Doesn't matter. Give me a down, give me an up. Give me something. Make YouTube happy. The thing about YouTube, if YouTube is happy, when you search like for sewing videos, it will put my, one of mine in the list of videos. But if YouTube doesn't like me, You'll scroll down 500 of them before you ever find me. I will be at the bottom of the list. Now, in my opinion, that's how it works. And I know I hear YouTubers all the time saying, subscribe, hit the bell, give me a thumbs up. But I found out that thumbs down are just as good as thumbs up. So if you can't stand me and I bore you to death, please give me a thumbs down, okay? I'm the worst. I'm the worst. I never miss one of Viv Mom's videos. I never miss one of Becky's videos. I occasionally watch other people's video, videos, YouTube videos like Brittany J. Jones. I really like her, but I don't need her tutorials. You know, I know how to sew. Um, I watch uh, Whitney at Tomcat Stitchery occasionally, but again, I don't need her tutorials on how to sew. But I, I always love to see what they make. And I love the part where they model what they make. You know, I think that's what you all like, too. So, anyhow, <laughs> if you think about it, please try to get YouTube to like me again, will you? <laughs> so, what do I have on? You can look at me right away, and you can turn to your neighbor and say, she obviously didn't make that top, Fred. Look at those giant wrinkles above her bust. Look at that, those two giant darts that want to be there. <laughs> Why is that? Why does a woman require a dart? A woman requires darts because she has bumps. It makes you longer from here to your waist, going up and over and around and under and down bumps, than you are over here where you're flat. And so it takes a much shorter distance to go from here to here than from here to here. So that's why you always end up with this extra glob over here, which of course you would take under the arm. But that's why you always end up with that, see? Your body wants less fabric here, but it still needs all the fabric for your bumps, okay? That's what darts are for. What does Peggy call it? LCD, length, circumference, depth. Darts are the depth part. So, obviously I did not make this t-shirt. I have this little fishy on it because I like to do applique. And I have an embroidery machine. Years ago, years ago, 25 years ago, 20 years ago, when did embroidery machines get invented? I wonder if there's a date on this. 2007. 2007, this is 2021. So, that's almost 20 years ago, right? I bought an embroidery machine. The first one I had was a Bernina 180. It was the only one I had ever seen or heard of. And I bought the Bernina 180. And so, I didn't know anything about software that you could buy or that you could make your own designs with software. And so I bought, I must have 50 of these. Oh. To my shame, to my shame, these things were not cheap. I think they got to be where they were almost $100 a piece. So this is from OESD. Uh, this is probably not available anymore. Maybe it is. I don't know. It's been a thousand years since I have done stuff like this. Well, it couldn't be that long, Joe. You've only had it for 20. <laughs> you remember my mind kind of um, has estimated numbers. Okay, let's remember that. <laughs> so, we live on a lake. We have two ponds. So, at the time, I thought, oh, look, there's fish in there. I should have the fish designs. So I got the fish designs. And one thing I really, really liked about them, and this is hard to see from the picture because it's red on red, 
But this one lets you put those iron on crystals. It makes little holes for you to put the iron on crystals. I'll take the camera off and show it to you up close, okay, in a minute. Be still. Hopefully the camera's picking that up. See my little diamonds? This was real cute when it was brand new because it wasn't faded. I need to make some more just for fun. But this is called Fish Follies by Nancy H. Barrett. And it's lots and lots of fun if you have a lot of quilt scraps from quilting, fabric scraps, because that's what you use to make this with. See, I think I use, oh, I remember now, another hobby I got into. Some hobbies I didn't stick with, but I took a class. I don't know if it was a crafty class or if it was just a class class, but it was about dyeing your own fabric. And so you start out with just this plain white cotton fabric, and then you have to buy, you wanna see what I bought? <laughs> Fortunately, I did not get addicted to every hobby I tried in my life. This was a fun one. It was a fun one and I liked it. But I think I decided it took too much time and, and fabric was already dyed anyway. I don't know what. But look, I bought this box. <laughs> the top of it has all of these paint pens in it that you can color fabric with. And I'll bet they're all as dry as can be. Yep, totally, completely dried up. I mean, they've been in this box for 10 years at least. Here's some that are wrapped. Maybe they're still good. What a shame. What a shame. Totally, totally dried up. So anyway, that's the top of it. Well, then I had to buy textile medium, which makes the color stay. You have to have a paintbrush or two or three or four or five. You have to have this kind of paintbrush or two or three or four of them. <laughs> Here's another fabric marker. Oh, it actually writes a little bit. And then you have to have these paints, see? You have to have these paints. Tammy had to buy all kinds of dye, but hers is powders. These are liquids, and they are from Jacquard Textile Colors. And I'll bet these are all dried up. Oh, look, this one isn't even opened. It's hard as a brick though. It was cracked open a little bit. Oh, what a shame, what a shame. All clumpy and dried up. I believe it's supposed to be liquid, y'all. <laughs> and now I've got green on my thumb, hold on. Oh. I might call a company I bought these from and see if there's a way to make them. Ooh, this one's all liquidy. It's fine. So I've got two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. I have twelve of these bottles of color. So it's those paints that I used to paint this fabric. It was just a piece of white cotton. And so I just painted it all different colors. And so then I decided to cut my fish out of it and use it. Now it's been washed over and over and over again, and it's all fading now. But if any of you would like to get involved in that, there's lots of classes on it, and it is fun. It's fun to do the embroidery, but it's hard to wear a shirt like this with anything but jeans. So I found that when I would take a shirt and I would put an embroidery or applique on it, it would only go with certain things. But if you have like a plain white top or a plain red top or a plain any color top, you can wear it with a zillion different things. Does that make sense? So anyway, that hobby, if anybody wants this, too heavy to mail though. You'd have to come here and get it. <laughs> I really should put these things on Etsy or eBay or somehow because i have lots and lots and lots of them now they came different ways these embroidery designs and i'm sure you all know that this one came on a cd some of my others came on that little bitty square rectangle thing that you stuck directly in your sewing machine i don't know if those are still usable or not some of the others came in even the older older fashion than that I really do need to go through all of those like I have time. <laughs>
That, of course, there's no lights on it now. And the one on the front is the one I'm wearing. So here's what I'm working on now. You know, I finished. I finished the sewing machines. I'm very, very happy. And thank you for the name. Thank you for the name. Oh, I wish I had remembered who told me the name. I'm going to look it up. I'm going to have to find out who told me the name. The Joy of Sewing. The Joy of Sewing is the name of this quilt. So my next project is to finish the mystery quilt. And I'll try to show you some more tips as I go through that process. Sometimes I think, oh, they've already heard this a million times. I don't want to hear it again. But maybe I'm wrong about that. <laughs> so yesterday, I talked about this in my devotion this morning. Simplicity 1698. I have made it one, two, three, four, five times. Five times. The fifth time I'm still working on. Let me show you how much I have done. I took it off last night and threw it here somewhere. This is how that top is made. This is the inside of it. This is the inside. You can see, and being a knit, you don't have to finish it. You can see it has this piece that just hangs down. It's attached at the shoulders. The back is finished first. Then you add the front to the back, and the front finishes the back. It's tricky. It's very tricky. I had to unsew it three or four times. And then I remembered, oh yes, oh yes, oh yes, I remember how you do this. So, if any of you would like, I'll do a complete tutorial on how you make this blouse. My pattern, my pattern as I've shown you in the past, has all of my fitting adjustments in it. It has my FBA in the front of it, which is why it fits me so good. So I'm not going to show you how to do the FBA because it's already done, but I will show you the construction. If y'all care, let me know and I'll do, uh, I'll make another one. I'll make number seven. One up to two, one up to five. I'll make number six. And um, because it's it goes together so fast. But this part here at the shoulders, let me finish showing you. Here's the inside of the front. Here's the inside of the back. And here's the funkiness going on at the shoulder. See here how this attaches into the shoulder. That's the tricky part. You wouldn't think it would be, but it's very tricky. So, I've made it this far, and I was walking around with this on yesterday afternoon, and Jerry came up here. This is all I had on. <laughs> this in my jeans. And so, it's like an itty bitty teeny weeny polka dot bikini. <laughs> so, this is the top of it. And so, then you add on the skirt part of the back and the skirt part of the front. See? Fun, fun, fun. This fabric I just bought, like last week. <gasps> you said you weren't buying any more fabric. You promised. No, I didn't promise. Didn't promise. I was in Joanne to find a particular piece of material. That's why I was there. We went there to do a grocery shopping and Joanne was across the street and I said, oh, run me over there real quick and I just ran in to find fabric I needed to finish my mystery quilt. It's gonna be the border around it, a skinny border around it. But as I was there, I walked by this. I mean, I don't know who put it in my way. I mean, they didn't have to put it there. You know, it's not really my fault. I didn't say, hey, put this fabric where Joy can see it. It's kind of like they always put those almond joys up by the cash register. I love Almond Joyce. Has nothing to do with it having my name. I just love coconut and nuts. I love them. So this was there. And I thought, oh, that'll be such a cute nightgown. I like to have a whole bunch of nightgowns. Because, number one, I love to sleep in a t-shirt. And so I make these um, little, short, sleeved, simple t-shirt type nightgowns. But it's not really a t-shirt. And I'll make them to, you know, an inch above my knees, two inches above my knees, and I can sleep in that. I cannot sleep in pants. I cannot sleep in pajama pants. They go on the floor before I get in bed. 
because when I'm in bed at night, they could, they just come up my leg, up, 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 so isn't this cute? Sound like Judy Kessinger. Isn't that cute? So I have enough left to make a nightgown. It'll be a short one, but that's all I need. And I decided I had enough, I'd go ahead and make one of these tops out of it. So that's my project for today. Maybe put the first border on my mystery quilt. If you didn't watch, if you don't watch my devotions, which is perfectly fine, you know, I've taken my devotions now and they're over on another channel called Shine because people wanted me to separate them and it was much easier for me to separate them instead of adding them all in between my sewing and quilting tutorials. But when I made it yesterday, I had just gotten back from the skin doctor. It's called the skin clinic, I think. And Jerry has to go like every three months. Jerry has that white, white skin, blonde hair, and he has a lot of sun damage on his skin. And so he goes like every 90 days and they just start squirting him all over the place. Yesterday they found a place on his shoulder that's going to have to have surgery. It's some kind of basal carcinoma or something. He's got to have surgery for that. Well, I go once a year just because I'm old. And my skin tans very, very easily. I have always been able to get a tan. When I was growing up, I was very, very, very dark. When I moved to Ohio to live with my grandparents when I was 16 years old, people thought I was from Mexico or Italy or somewhere. They didn't believe I was from Arizona <laughs> because I was so dark. So anyway, from the sun, very sunny in Arizona. And I used to run around all the time outside in shorts and a little t-shirt and no shoes and oh, I just loved it, loved it. So, I have, my stuff's more like freckles. I'll get like these dark spots and they're freckles. But I have some marks on my back now that didn't used to be there. Welcome to your 70s. And so I just take my shirt off and I say, just look at my back and tell me if anything back there is bad. So the lady looked at my back. She said, no, no, everything's fine back here. So I have these little, um, little circle places. If you already know this from my devotion, just turn me off. But they're like little round circles, three-eighths inch. And it's like somebody cut a circle out of sandpaper, flat sandpaper, and stuck it on your skin. And I had one here and I had one here. And I can scratch them and scratch them, but the sandpaper doesn't go away. It just irritates them and makes them red. So I showed it to the lady, and I said, oh, I've got these little sandpaper things. She said, oh, those are such and such, such and such. Something activitis or actinitis or something. <laughs> and um, she said, those won't hurt you, but I can get rid of them if you want me to. I said, okay, fine. So she squirted the one on my belly. Ouch! And then she found the one back here, and she said, oh, let me get that one, too. Then, for some unknown reason, <laughs> I made the mistake of saying, can you do anything about age spots? I said, I've suddenly got these dark places on my face and I just hate them. And so, and I didn't show her where they were. I just said, I'm getting these dark places on my face. And she went, oh, sure, we can get those. <laughs> she has this thing and it's not a machine. It's like a tall thermos bottle, but it has the spray thing at the top. So she just starts going after my face. One, two, three. One, two, three. Ouch, 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 ouch. One, two, three. She did four of them. And I'm like, but well, wait a minute. I didn't even tell you to do it. So if I look like I've been in a fight with the cactus, that's what's wrong with my face, okay? Now, I want to tell you something else. You know, this, this is an embarrassing thing to tell you. you know, I, don't, I don't mind telling people the goofy things I do and the mistakes I make, but this one's very embarrassing. <laughs> and it's so funny, odd, coincidental, that Viv made, she didn't make a mistake at all, but her iron spit out some blob of black on something she was making yesterday, and she was so upset about it. And I gave her some really bad advice on how to get it out. She had used everything she had, and I told her to try WD-40. And the WD-40 just made it worse. Ugh. So, we were commenting and talking about that, and the stupid irons, and how they squirt stuff. <laughs> well, 
My, I was working on this yesterday, and I took it over there to iron part of it, and it just sizzled, it went and it stuck, and I lifted the iron, and the stuff was stuck to it, and I thought, what the heck, what the heck, I just cleaned this yesterday, what could be on my iron, I thought, maybe it's too hot, so I turned it down a little bit, <clears throat> but then I thought, oh, it's all dirty on the bottom, because part of this had stuck to it. It was like the color red had come off of it. And it was stuck to my iron. So, I think you all have seen before how I clean an iron. Let me show you. Here's Mr. Clean. Do you know him? He's always been bald like that ever since I was a kid. <laughs> so, I take one of these Mr. Clean pads. Let me see if I can get one out. I destroyed the one yesterday. I'll tell you why in a minute. So you take one of these, and you put the rest back for future use. Then you get a washcloth or a dish towel or something to put it on, see? So then you're supposed to squirt it with water. You squirt it with water. You squirt it, see? Water. And you squirt it with water. Then you take your hot iron and you iron it. Works beautifully. Usually. <laughs> so yesterday, I thought, oh my gosh, my iron's a mess. It had white streaks. Look at it now, it looks real good. It had white streaks, white sticky streaks all over it. And I thought, oh my God, that must have just melted that fabric. I was probably using a scrap because it didn't hurt what I was making. So I thought, oh my gosh, I need to clean it again. Well, I squirt, 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 squirt this. I ironed and ironed and ironed and ironed. I looked at the back of my iron. It was absolutely, completely covered with white streaks. I put it down on my fabric and it wouldn't even move. Wouldn't even move. I thought, what the heck? I am going to clean it again. So I squirt it, and I squirt it, and I squirt it, and I did it again. I probably did it three or four times, y'all. Can any of you figure out what I was doing wrong? I was doing something really, really, really wrong. Oh, was I doing something wrong? I have to make it a contest and give away a big prize. <laughs> but I don't have the time to deal with the contest right now. Let me show you what a super, super stupid ignorant, crazy, <sighs> senior moment caused me to do and not notice. I'm going to say it's a senior moment. If not, I'm really in trouble. <laughs> Hold on. I wonder if any of you have figured out. Tell me if you figured out what I did before I show it to you, okay? Tell me if you figured it out. So here I had my washcloth. Here I had my Mr. Clean. Here I had my squirt bottle. Here I had my iron. It was getting dirtier and dirtier and dirtier and dirtier. I was about to pull what hair I had left out. <laughs> Guess what I did? I have two spray bottles here. Two of them. See them? They're about the same height. They're about the same size. They both go back here just like this. That's where they go. So what I had done was I had grabbed this. And I just started squirting. I didn't even look to see what it was. It's clear. It looks like water. And I was squirting this, squirting this. This, my friends, is Mary Ellen's Best Press Clear Starch. Clear Starch. I was cleaning my iron with starch. <gasps> Oh my goodness. So, I have a gallon jug of it somewhere. I need to fill this up. I have decided I need to store the starch in a different location or I need to put an alarm bell on it or something. If I pick, I mean, wouldn't you think? The water's in a bright red bottle. <laughs> so the lesson is, learn from your mistakes always buy extra fabric 
If it says you need five eighths yard, buy a yard. If it says you need a yard, buy a yard and a quarter. If it says you need a yard and a half, buy a yard and three quarters. Always buy extra fabric because you can use the extra for quilting, you can use the extra for donations, you can use the extra to make a pot holder or something. But if I hadn't had extra fabric, whatever piece I fried there at the first, I was able to just cut out a new, a new piece, obviously. So, anywho, <laughs> Viv and I both had an iron catastrophe yesterday. But it, mine wasn't an iron catastrophe. It was a joy, you know, get your brain cells in gear or something catastrophe. Alrighty, that's all I have to tell you today. Did you see my new tool? Did I show you my new tool? <laughs> this is a press your seams open. Have you seen Donna, Donna Jordan over there at Jordan Fabrics? She always presses, this. she's got these uh, fingernails she gets put on and they're strong as steel. And she flattens out the seams with her fingernails. Well, I can't do that. My fingernails would just break. So I bought this little wheelie dilly. See? Mine's got a crack in it. It's brand new. Look, it's got a crack almost a quarter of the way through it. But anyway, you just roly-poly your seams so then you don't have to go iron them at first. So that's just laying here, so I showed you that. <laughs> All right, my dear friends, I'm going to let you go for today. I'm going to start soon. I have a million things I want to sew, of course. I want to make a whole bunch of new tops. But now that I'm into quilting, I have that other quilt cut out. Remember, I was going to use my sewing room at my daughter's house just for quilts. Well, I'm not going to be there very much in the near future. So I have another quilt all cut out. It's the one I got from that Bernita Jeff store in Colorado. What's it called? It's called Safe Harbor. It's all chopped, it's already, all the pieces are cut. Remember, I cut them all up, and they're all in little baggies, and they're all ready to go. So I may start putting those together soon. So many things I always want to do. Our RV is still down at National Indoor RV Center. They had like one day's work to do on it. They have had it over for a week. They had it five days last week. They've had it two days this week. And all they had to do was check to be sure everything was working right. There wasn't any, and the steering wheel was crooked, and Jerry wanted the, it aligned, and the steering wheel made straight. I told Jerry, I said, they charge $169 an hour, I think. <sighs> I said, I hope we don't have to sell the RV so we can pay the bill to the indoor RV people. <laughs> All right, dear ones. I hope I didn't bore you stiff. I'll be back soon doing something hopefully not making a mess with some uh tool that i own <laughs> bye for now